Howdy folks, welcome back to Doing Brew. On today's video, we're going to be installing a new dryer. Our old dryer just quit heating and I tried to fix it, but at $300 for the parts, I figured it was time to get a new one. Installing a new dryer, it's not all that difficult to do. If you look at it in its pieces and parts, you got about four or five steps to take care of. You have to install the new cord, or in my case, I use the old cord. You need to hook up the ducting. You need to put on the, the feet and level it. And then maybe you have to adjust the swing of the door, which I had to do. But the place where I bought my dryer, they wanted anywhere between $150 to $225 to deliver and install a new dryer. The $225 price tag was for changing the swing of the door which took me only about 20 minutes to do, and they were gonna charge me $75 to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing we need to do is unpack our dryer and remove all the packing material and the tape and film that protect the pieces and parts during shipping. Now, I don't want to discard this green label. I'm going to pull it off here momentarily and keep it. That's a pretty neat little label that they put on to ensure that I park the dryer the right distance from the wall once I'm done with the hookup. Okay, so I put some protective cardboard down on the floor. I'm going to tip over the dryer. This is so I can install the feet, which of course come included in the package. And this is pretty easy to do. They just twist in to the holes that they're intended to go into. And I'll get those hand tight now, and we'll level if we need to once we get the dryer in place permanently. Now I'll reset the dryer. Next up, we have to hook up the electrical supply cord. First step is to remove the electrical plate cover. And there's two different types of cords. There's a, a four wire, which has four prongs. The fourth prong there is a ground. And then there's a three wire, which is what I have, and that's three wires without a dedicated ground. Both the three wire and the four wire are pretty easy to hook up. They each have one neutral and two hot wires. The hot wires are on the outside and the neutral wire is that one there in the middle. Just to show you here, here are the hot terminals. And the one in the middle is your neutral terminal. So now I need to install the cord keeper. It goes into the hole where the cord slips through, and it's a pretty important little gadget in that it prevents any pulling or tugging on the cords where they are attached on the inside of the dryer to the electrical terminals, where any excessive pulling you know, could result in a short or a fire. And it also prevents that thin piece of sheet metal from kind of cutting through your cord. So take the time. If you need to buy this little gadget, it's uh, 95 cents or so, not that much, and it doesn't take long at all to install. So you break it into uh, two parts, fit the top and bottom through the slot, and then you want to tighten that down a little bit, but not all the way because you still need to thread the cord through there. Now you notice that little piece of white felt back there. That's also kind of important in that that prevents any dust from getting back to where your electrical connections are. Now we'll get that just enough so that it doesn't fall out, but plenty of room still to feed that cord through. Okay, now just a little bit of patience as you thread the cord through and get it to kind of angle up towards your terminals. Of course, at this point, the plug is not plugged in, and so there's no concern with live electrical wires as you do these connections. Now I'm gonna loosen the screws at the connecting points for our three connections. Again, that's two hots and a neutral. Now, just like with an outlet or a switch, the hot wires or the hot terminals are going to be copper colored, while the neutral is a silvery color. So I have my three wires properly installed, the two hots on the outside, the neutral in the middle on the inside, and now I'm resetting those three screws to ensure a nice tight connection. At this point, I'm going to tighten down my cord keeper about as tight as I can get it, Make sure that cord doesn't move around. And I'm going to reinstall 
the electrical plate cover and tighten that screw down. And that completes our electrical hookup. Next up is connecting the dryer exhaust ducting. Now, I have another video on the complete installation of this rigid exhaust ducting, which I believe is the best way to go for dryer exhaust. Now, clearly I need to trim about four inches off of that piece of rigid ducting there to accommodate the exhaust port on my dryer. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the measurements, but there at the connection point at the elbow to the right, I've got about two inches of space to play with, so I don't have to be absolutely perfect or too concerned about getting that cut just right, because I've got a little bit of leeway to play with. Now I'm going to take off the left side elbow. Now, just a word of caution, when working with this rigid ducting, you really need to wear some gloves, because after you make a cut, that new cut edge is razor sharp, and it'll really cut your fingers quickly. So now I'm just going to work this ducting. The seam of it there comes apart pretty easily by depressing it and pulling it apart. Of course, I need to take it apart to complete that cut. And then using some tin snips, it's a pretty easy cut to make. Not too difficult. Hey, if you're interested in watching the complete dryer duct installation video, I'll put a link right at the end of this video so you can check it out. Okay, the next step is to attach our elbow. Now there's two parts to an elbow, the crimp side and the non-crimp side. The non-crimp side fits around something, like the exhaust port on our dryer, which I'll secure with a screw. And then the crimp side, which fits into something, like our rigid ducting. I get into a whole lot more detail on assembling rigid ducting in my rigid ducting video, if you do want to check that out. But for now, we'll go ahead, get this set up. I'm gonna drill a pilot hole for my sheet metal screw. Yeah, it's a little frustrating sometimes, the drill bit will run on you. But stick with it, and eventually you'll get that hole drilled. And then we're going to secure those two pieces together with a half-inch sheet metal screw. Now, one of my subscribers who watched the Bridget Duck video pointed out that that screw tip sticking down inside the ducting could be a possible point where uh, dryer lint could collect. So, if you're interested, stay tuned, because... Uh, I'm going to open up this ducting in six months, so it'll be the summer of 2018, to check out and see if there has been much dryer lint accumulation around those screw tips, because now I'm curious myself to find out. Now, I'm going to use some dryer duct tape. Now, this tape is specifically designed in Underwriters Laboratory UL approved for dryer duct seam sealing. Now, it's important to use this for a little bit of added security, but also to try and make your seam as airtight as possible. And here is that dryer vent tape that I'm using. And next up, we're going to attach that assembly we just made to the dryer vent port. Again, I'm going to pre-drill a hole and attach it with a sheet metal screw. And a bit more of our dryer duct tape to ensure an airtight connection. And now that I have the dryer pretty close to its final location, I'm going to rotate that Rigid ducting down, make the final connection onto that elbow, and I'll follow the same procedures, pre-drilling, screw, and tape to ensure that that's a secure connection. And that completes the connection of our dryer exhaust ducting. And here's the look of the completed, very efficient, rigid exhaust system. Again, highly recommended. Okay, now I'm going to plug in our dryer. Of course, I recycled my old cord. No sense spending the money on a new one when this one's perfectly good. And now I'm going to reattach that green label. 
And this is pretty slick. It, and it, just a real quick reference to ensure that I've left enough space behind the back of the dryer so there's plenty of airflow that again leads to the efficiency of the dryer. Okay, now that our dryer's in place, it's time to level it. And what I like to do is level it left and right first, and then go back and do front and back. Please don't give me any grief for using vice grips for this. It's 14 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and I didn't want to have to walk all the way back to the shed. So, to simply place a level on top of the dryer and turn those legs until you get it level left and right. Now we're working on back and front. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to set the back legs a little further into the dryer, and then that way I know I'll just be leveling using the front legs. And we'll get it nice and level. Let's give it a test drive here real quick. And it works. Fantastic. All right, now I have one final step to do. I have to change the swing of the dryer door. Because right now it opens on the right side, which with the washer on the right side, it's a little bit inconvenient having to get the clothes up and over the door. So I'm going to take off the door, which the hinges are now on the right side, and I'm going to swap the whole thing over to the left. So that means that anything that's on the left side needs to move over to the right side, and vice versa. So here, I'm taking off the door latch. This is what keeps the door closed when the dryer's in operation. So very simple, one screw, take it out, move it from the left side to the right side, and secure it again. Now, there are some blanks on the left side that cover the holes that are pre-drilled in case you do want to change your door swing. So I'm going to take those blanks out and pop them in in the screw holes on the right side. And next up, I'm going to take the blank for the screw latch and move it from the right side to the left side. That's not absolutely required, but it just makes it look a little better. Okay, so here you can see I've got to put the door over on the left, but look at the shape of the door opening and the trim around the inside of the door, that seal that keeps the hot air in. I pretty much have to take the entire door apart to make everything work out just right. But it's only a total of six screws and a couple of latches and blanks it's not too difficult to do. So here I'm taking out the door latch, which is configured for a left opening or right-sided hinge, and I'm putting it in on the opposite side of the door, putting the cover plate back on, and now here's the blank that just covers up that big hole. Pop that back in. Okay, and now I need to take a couple of screws out that do nothing more than just hold the outside of the door to the inside of the door. I'm going to take those screws out and then go ahead put this up on edge, take apart the inside from the outside, the front from the back, and I'm just going to flip that around so that my door opening aligns with the door closure. Now, very simply, just putting those screws back in and reattaching the hinges, but now on the left side of the door. I'll well, secure the last of the hinge screws, and we are just about there. So again, as you've seen on my other videos, this household chore, this household project, it's not that difficult to do. Just break it down in its pieces and parts, little time tools and patience. You can install your own dryer, save yourself upwards of $200. Hey, if you have any questions on this video, folks, please let me know. I'm happy to help you any way I can, and I look forward to seeing you back here on Doing Brew. Take care, folks.